morning. Uh, thank you for joining uh, this presentation on automation test strategy and uh, design for agile teams. Um, software test automation has been there in one form or other for many decades. Organizations had missed successes with test automation, even though uh, few have been immensely successful in automating their tests as a part of their application development cycle. The benefits uh, to these organizations have been huge in terms of cost, uh, time to market, and quality. So why is it that many teams are still continuing with uh, their manual tests or struggling as they embark on test automation? Can every manual test be automated? How to get started with test automation? What are some of the strategies and best practices as you embark or continue with the test automation journey? So these are some of the questions that I plan to address in my uh, presentation. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sudreti Mondel. I manage uh, technical sales uh, at Testin. Um, I wrote my first test automation script on Windows 3.1. Um, using uh, Windows SDK to record keystrokes and mouse clicks and play it back. It wasn't pretty then, but uh, we have come a long way since. Um, today, there are hundreds of tools, uh, many domain thought leaders uh, with immense expertise, many books written in this area, and of course, a simple Google search is a lot of uh, useful information. About myself, I spent the last uh, 12 plus years or so working on a variety of uh, testing tools, including uh, automated functional and performance testing, test modeling, test data management, service virtualization, continuous delivery and continuous testing, and DevOps. So I've gathered some experience along the way, and uh, I want to share some of that with you um, in this presentation. So my presentation will cover four main areas, starting with the basics. Uh, what do I mean by test automation? What are some of the challenges and where to get started? Next, I will cover some strategies and best practices as you implement test automation in your organization. Finally, I will wrap up with a brief overview of how artificial intelligence, machine learning uh, is getting introduced into software testing and autonomous software testing. Um, let's dive into my presentation. So what is test automation? Uh, it is a technique to test software without any human intervention. You execute a test that is triggered by an event like a completion of a bill or by a schedule like a midnight run. The actual test result is then validated against expected test results using assertions or validations. So this reduces testing time by running tests in parallel, including um, um, it reduces time to market and also testing costs. Test automation improves software quality as you can now run more tests to improve uh, test coverage. Common misconception that test automation will replace manual testers is not true. Manual testing is still needed for exploratory testing. Not every test uh, can be automated. Test automation lifecycle comprises determining the scope of testing, how you're going to test, the strategy itself, uh, what tool you're going to use, uh, test execution comprising setting up the environment and automating the test run, and then, of course, uh, analyzing the results from your test runs. So we'll cover more on these topics later in this presentation. So what are some of the benefits of test automation? We touched upon it slightly in the last slide. Now, test automation provides an automated safety net before uh, you promote your software from production to production through automated smoke and regression testing. It, it provides faster results back to testers and developers for a quick resolution on issues. Um, you can now test with more data scenarios as uh, it is not manually driven. You now have the flexibility to do risk-based testing, uh, choosing the test uh, you want to run based on risk. Uh, you can free up some of your manual testers to do exploratory testing or other tasks. Um, you can tie up uh, automated tests with your continuous integration and continuous delivery processes to achieve uh, continuous testing. The biggest benefit of testing automation is, of course, the software quality. Uh, one of my large uh, Fortune 500 credit card customer has achieved a zero severity one defect in production for over a year because of the push uh, for test automation a few years ago. What are some of the barriers uh, to test automation and why do some uh, efforts fail? 
Uh, test automation is interesting. Uh, you write a small piece of code that tests the feature that your fellow developers have worked hard to implement. Um, as we will see, test automation requires software development mindset and follows the same set of practices uh, to be successful. Test automation requires a similar investment and priority as software development. It can start as a pet project, but requires corporate mandate for wider adoption. You also need the right attitude amongst testers and developers. You need some experience with test automation and the right tool set. You need a stable test environment. In addition, software development best practices, including agile best practices, must be followed uh, to be successful. Test automation can be classified in multiple ways. It can be based on type of testing, what you're trying to test, for example, functionality or performance, or a type of test being executed, whether it's unit tests, smoke tests, API, UI, and so on. In addition, it can be categorized based on which part of the SDLC, like development, integration, or system, and the tests are executed with, and also where you are executing the test, like in the device, whether it's desktop, mobile, web, location, uh, multi-geo, and so on. So why is this important? This is required to identify the right strategy, the right tool set, and of course, set the right expectations from the test. The maturity levels of test automation start from 100% manual testing to continuous testing where test cases are created in an autonomous fashion based on application usage. So these levels of maturity mostly apply for UI testing, but can also be applied to other types of testing in some form or other. In many cases, organizations start with test automation by writing scripts to execute tests and execute them through a cron job or integrate that with CI for continuous testing. This I labeled as a level one. For UI interactions, recording user interactions with the application under test or AUT and playing it back to test the application would be the next level. And this I termed as level two. In level three, uh, script-based or script-less tests are made immune to small changes in the UI, like changes in the environment, and the reinforced learning techniques in AI is used uh, to locate the element even when few attributes of the element has changed in the DOM. And uh, then you can execute the test without any issues. So this reduces the level of maintenance that is needed uh, for automated UI tests. This is also applicable for pixel level um, validation tools. In level four, automated tests are created based on learning the usage of an application by actual users. This helps test the path used by the user while traversing a business scenario, like maybe booking a travel ticket on a website or buying something from a shopping cart application. Uh, for those of you who are new to test automation, you're really asking this question, how do I get started? Uh, to do so, you have to think about the scope. What is it uh, that you want to test and automate the testing of? Uh, what framework and tool sets do you want to use? The tools will be appropriate for creating, executing your automated test. Uh, in many cases, uh, you may be choosing multiple tools. Then you have to design and execute your test followed by refining your test to adapt to your environment and your scenarios. The next step will be to integrate your test with CI CD processes, and you may have in-house um, to achieve continuous testing. So let's now uh, look into some of the strategies that you may consider while embarking on a test automation journey uh, so that you can arrive at your goals. These are likely areas that you might want to start thinking and address as you get started uh, with test automation. Um, where do you begin? I mean, what tests do you want to automate first? Uh, applying uh, agile principles. If you're an agile shop, uh, how do you integrate with your agile uh, applications? Then uh, test automation candidates. Um, what are your test automation candidates? Um, um, are you uh, looking into test modeling and how do you improve test coverage? Um, choosing automation tools and implementation of it. Um, if you need test data, what are the different ways to get test data? And if you're dependent on services, um, how do you virtualize them? Then comes number seven, managing and maintaining automated tests, which is uh, one of the important aspects of test automation. 
um, test automation metrics, uh, continuous testing, and finally, uh, the cost of uh, test automation. I'll cover each of these topics in more detail in the following slides. So where do I begin? Um, this is about identifying your scope. What do you want to automate first? Mike Cohn lays out a testing pyramid uh, with unit test at the bottom and GUI test at the top of the pyramid. Everything else like component level testing, integration testing, API testing is in between. Uh, typically, you identify the low hanging fruit that delivers the big bucks, identify what hurts most and what delivers the biggest value to your organization. If GUI tests require a lot of manual effort, that may be your starting point. On the other hand, if your unit tests are not integrated and automated, then that can be your starting point. If API is the service you provide to your customers, making sure that those APIs deliver what they're expected to yields the biggest value. So that can be your starting point. So before choosing a tool or framework for your needs, try it out in your environment uh, with your test use cases. If it meets your needs, then expand adoption of that solution for other test cases. Agile principles, including team over processes, working software over documentation, collaboration over contracts, and responding to changes instead of blindly following a plan, um, all are applicable for test automation. Automated test development should be considered like any other um, software development project. Each dev sprint will have its own test sprint, uh, test creation sprint to test the features built during the sprint. These tests uh, then become part of the regression suite as you move to your next uh, sprint cycle. Uh, test automation um, is a team effort. You need the whole team approach. For test automation to be successful, everyone on the team needs to be on board, irrespective of each person's role in the team. Expectations from testing must be clearly outlined. Delivering a functional feature requires a total team effort and quality needs to be baked into the software from the beginning, including making the software testable. Testing shouldn't be an activity that is done only at the end of the sprint by a designated uh, tester. It should be part of the whole process. Test automation requires time and with experience, you can become successful with uh, deployment of test automation. In an agile software development life cycle, as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, you will have automated tests for a sprint created um, while sprint development is being done uh, so that you have the test ready to execute towards the end of the sprint. These new tests are added to the regression suite and are executed during or after every sprint. Uh, some or all of the exception tests may be executed before code is actually released to production. What are your test automation candidates? The biggest problem I usually see uh, is that teams start off by trying to automate everything. The problem is that not every test can be automated. For test cases to be automated, um, you should look for tests that are deterministic and don't need uh, human interaction. They are hard to test manually and need to run more than once, possibly uh, with different test data sets or on different browsers or for load testing. You should consider using automation for your any activity that saves time, and that includes uh, software testing. What tests uh, you should not automate? In general, um, tests that uh, you execute once or applications that are not testable unless you actually use it uh, should not be automated. Explorator tests uh, or tests that do not uh, provide predictable results are additional examples, but I mean, there can be exception, exceptions for different scenarios. Um, let's look into test modeling and test coverage. Test model um, um, can be built in three ways. Event-based model, which is um, based on GUI events that occur at least once. State-based model, based on GUI states exercised at least once. And domain model, which is uh, based on functionality of the application. In model-based test automation, you create a model of your application and specify the inputs uh, to the application. You identify the list of paths that need testing. This can depend on the business scenario, events, or states that you are trying to test. Uh, you may also apply heuristics and risk factors while trying to come up with a test list. 
that can provide you with an optimal test coverage based on risk that you would like to take. And uh, next, you execute the test and evaluate results. So there are um, test automation solutions that provide you with test automation scripts and fit for purpose test data to optimize your test and test data coverages. So how can test modeling help? Uh, software testing based on a model improves test coverage without increasing over-testing. And over-testing uh, is a huge problem I've seen across a number of different organizations. I've worked with a, a company who are able to reduce their overtesting from 1,700% to around 300. And you will need some amount of overtesting. So, for example, uh, you're trying to test a functionality, a feature of an application, you need to log in, you'll have to log in multiple times. But 1,700% is, is a waste of resource, it's a waste of time. And uh, this company was also able to increase test coverage from around 40% uh, to 100% uh, using model based testing. The next uh, is around um, tool selection. So tool selection process involves understanding your requirements and key criteria in your decision-making process. If you already have some type of test automation tool in-house, consider that as a baseline. You may leverage a pool matrix technique for analysis to make your decision. And if you are an agile development shop, it is always wise to pick an agile friendly tool. An example will be to choose a tool that ties test cases and test results back to um, user stories and requirements in your agile management tool. As for implementation of test automation goes, um, you have the option to go code based or code less. Uh, this will help, uh, this will depend on who is actually um, using the tool. So test engineers will prefer code based or a hybrid solution, whereas manual testers will prefer a codeless solution. Your choice of tools will also depend on your test execution environment. Not every test automation solution supports every environment, like I mentioned earlier, uh, mobile, uh, web, or um, the cloud, and so on. Test data is an important aspect of testing. In many cases, it derives testing as in data-driven testing. Now, before you start testing, you need to understand uh, what your test data requirements are. Test data coverage is an important uh, as uh, test coverage itself. Testing teams typically derive test data from uh, production databases to subset and masking. The test data is then made available in a database uh, as a gold copy uh, from where test data is provisioned to individual teams for testing. Now test data may get burned after testing and when that happens, you just have to reprovision the test data from your gold copy. Now, test data from production isn't the only source of test data. To reduce reliance on production data for security reasons like GDPR um, or for time reasons, because I've seen customers require a month or 30 days notice to get test data from production. Uh, in that, those cases, and also to improve test coverage, uh, companies rely on synthetic test data generation. A leading um, sneaker company in the US is a great example who actually uh, is uh, generating all of their test data using synthetic test data generation. And it's done by uh, creating the model of your test data needs, and then uh, you make it fit for purpose for your test cases. So test cases receive just the data uh, that you need um, for testing that particular test case. In addition, some of the advanced test data management tools also have uh, the uh, provision to reserve test data so that you're not uh, running into each other's data when you're testing multiple things at the same time. Uh, TDM, test data management tools uh, from uh, CA, Informatica, IBM, and others uh, provide different sets of capabilities around uh, creating test data. And there are also some uh, open source tools like Faker that allows you to create synthetic test data. Now, today's applications are no longer monolithic, and meaning uh, they have to rely on various other components and applications that have their own SDLC timelines. And when your application or component relies on other components, and these components are unavailable, or they are, they, are, they, they are charged, you virtualize these interfaces or components with what we call um, service virtualization. This is very similar to mocking and stubbing, uh, and this can be done for APIs, databases, uh, websites, um, and so on. A variety of tools are available in this space, including tools from uh, Computer Associates or Broadcom, Parasoft, Delphix, 
Uh, Delphix is focused on database virtualization, uh, Tricentis, and others. A large U.S. bank was able to cut down millions um, from its data center infrastructure spend by using virtual interfaces using service virtualization for its performance testing tool. They didn't have to set up uh, elaborate performance testing environment. All the dependent interfaces were virtualized using service virtualization, and uh, they were able to conduct uh, 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 their test, uh, performance test. Uh, another bank uh, virtualized their SMS interfaces uh, so that when they are doing performance testing, they're not sending out SMSs to their customers, but uh, they're just using the virtual interface. And uh, uh, a phone company in the US uh, used um, service virtualization to set up uh, their um, training environment. So uh, multiple different use cases there for service virtualization. It's, uh, it's something that I have seen being used by many different customers uh, as a part of their uh, testing processes. It is important to deliver features as described in the requirements by business analysts. How do your business analysts know that uh, your application has delivered the features that uh, they have requested? And uh, this is where linking the user stories uh, from requirements with the test cases and test results in an agile requirements management tool becomes important. And a test management tool uh, becomes important. So BAs don't typically have uh, access to test systems, but they do have access to requirements management tools. A time test result back to requirements makes it easier for business analysts to have better visibility into where the feature is in the SDLC, how long it will take to get to production or get to a beta and so on. Uh, it also helps uh, to them understand when this particular feature will be delivered and if it uh, meets the user stories outlined in the requirements. And, and that's why it is important to uh, choose a test automation solution that actually integrates uh, with your requirements tool. Now, test maintenance is uh, one of the biggest challenges with test engineers encounter when they uh, do test automation, especially for applications uh, with the UI. Minor changes in the UI break most automated tests. Advanced uh, testing automation frameworks like uh, Testim allows you to create automated tests that reduce test maintenance. Uh, Testim self heals automated tests whenever there are minor changes to the UI, cutting down the overall test maintenance to less than 10%. It does this using machine learning techniques in AI. You can also reduce test maintenance by modularizing your test and by using some of the best practices that we will cover later in this presentation. Software test metrics uh, can be used to measure and monitor your team's progress with test automation. There are a variety of different test uh, software test metrics. Um, um, I will just cover a few here. So it can convey absolute data, like time taken to run a test, or uh, derivative data, like information uh, that you derive from absolute data. Now, some test automation metrics that I typically ask my customers are, I mean, the percentage is a manual test that they are executing, or the mean time to debug a failing automated test. The more manual tests you have, the longer it will take to make sure that your application is ready for release and a high MTD or uh, uh, mean time to debug uh, an automated test is an indicator that uh, your automated test code is not of high quality. Bugs uh, that are found by automation can be helpful to determine if your test automation efforts are bringing value. And then test automation flakiness, uh, meaning that uh, your automated test runs uh, successfully sometimes and other times it doesn't run successfully, and that should be zero because this is a good indicator to know if your automation tests are reliable or not. One of the main reasons for test automation is to be able to achieve um, continuous testing. As you implement continuous integration uh, through Jenkins, Circle CI, or Team City, or other tools, the next step is the ability to execute your test every time you have a new build. And Test automation helps you achieve that. Uh, most test automation tools have a way to execute their test using uh, CLI. And all you have to do uh, is uh, tie that CLI into your Jenkins uh, so that every time you check in your code and Jenkins starts a build and completes the build successfully, your smoke test uh, gets executed or other tests can get executed. 
In the same fashion, you can also integrate automated tests with your continuous delivery and continuous release tools to integrate testing into your entire software development lifecycle pipeline, enabling uh, you to do continuous testing as you promote builds from one environment to another and ultimately to uh, your production. Uh, test automation is an enabler for continuous testing. You can achieve uh, continuous testing for both functional and non-functional tests, including uh, component level performance tests. Um, determining the ROI of your test automation efforts, uh, this can be tricky. Uh, common calculation that some folks use to get a rough estimate of their test automation costs are basically um, your tool cost plus labor cost to create an automated test, uh, test maintenance plus the test auto maintenance cost. So if uh, cost of automating the test, um, running the test manually is more than um, automation cost, then it makes sense to automate the cost. Uh, so it makes sense to automate the test um, uh, but it is just based on the cost. Um, this can help you decide whether um, a test case is even worth automating as opposed to testing it manually from a cost perspective. But there can be other factors because the benefits like time savings, ability to run with broader data sets, improve quality uh, should also be factored in. And ROI quickly adds up with each uh, rerun of your automated test suite. So now that we went through some of the test automation strategy considerations, let's look into some of the best practices for test design. Um, I haven't seen any questions so far, but if you have any questions uh, regarding the previous section, uh, please uh, feel free to add them in the chat window. And uh, I will try to answer them uh, during towards the end of the presentation. Uh, it is quite normal to assume that um, your applications are going to change over time. And uh, since you know change is going to happen, uh, what you should start off right uh, from the beginning using best practices or design patterns. Um, doing so will make uh, your automation more repeatable and uh, more maintainable. Um, some common test automation design patterns um, that many teams use to help them create more reliable test automation are like uh, the single uh, responsibility principle, the screenplay pattern, uh, ports and adapters, and, and presenter first. The single responsibility principle is a popular strategy to use when creating your test automation by modeling the behavior of your application. Uh, creating simple page objects that model the pieces of your software that you are testing against uh, can do this. So for example, um, you would write a page uh, object for login or a page object for your home page. The screenplay pattern takes page objects and chops them down, down into really tiny pieces for better maintainability and reliability. The ports and adapters design strive to make sure that uh, you are using a single responsibility principle so that one object do only one thing and have one reason to change. Now, you decouple your test to uh, swap slow components with faster simulators to prevent slowing down your test using uh, ports and adapters. The presenter first is a modification of the module view controller or MVC. Uh, it's a way of organizing code uh, and uh, development behaviors. And this helps uh, to create a tested software using uh, TDD or test-driven development approach. The test automation process can be a six-step uh, cyclical process comprising analyzing your test requirements and objectives, authoring your tests through scripting or recording or a combination thereof, um, executing your tests to make sure they run reliably, uh, evaluating the results and communicating results back to your team uh, to gain confidence, and uh, fine-tuning the tests to make them more reliable. So if you notice a flaky test, uh, refactor it. Uh, to make it more reliable. More importantly, uh, delete any tests that are not reliable and haven't been fixed within a given uh, time frame. When looking at your automated regression test, um, ask the team if the regression test is still needed or if it is still uh, adding a value. Um, 
pruning your old test will save you time in maintenance and ensure uh, you're only running tests that give uh, your team value. For web-based um, GUI testing, uh, here's an example of what you may want to analyze and test. Um, I won't go through um, each item here, uh, but uh, these are this uh, a good list of things that uh, typically uh, you would try it out in a, a GUI-based testing. In a similar fashion, uh, you can classify different areas of testing for uh, for API testing, for example, um, integration testing, um, security testing, and so on. So on. Um, you analyze uh, your needs and then uh, start implementing your test based on the objectives that I mentioned in, in the previous slide. Let's now look into uh, some of the test uh, automation uh, best practices. So what are some of them? I mean, there are many. Um, you cannot automate every test in one shot. You have to prioritize them. and uh, uh, pick the low-hanging fruit that is quickly and easily uh, implemented uh, using the test solution that you have decided to use. Uh, you have to periodically revisit uh, your existing regression tests that I mentioned earlier and recycle the ones that are no longer adding value. And uh, reusability is always a good thing within the test uh, through modular tests or if you have subtests, uh, reusing them, it helps with um, uh, it helps with, uh, of course, um, uh, debugging the test as well as it, it provides more value. Uh, you can create structured and short single purpose tests that are independent. Um, why do you want the test to be independent? If they are independent, then you can execute the test in parallel. And, and now you don't need uh, the time, uh, much time to run the test like it, it would have been if you run them sequentially. You compose complex tests from single ones, simple ones. The initial state of a test uh, should always be consistent. For example, if you expect to log in to an application before running the test, um, you should not be logged in when you begin the test. Otherwise, um, you have to uh, implement uh, steps to log your application out before you start your test. Uh, for synchronization purposes, I uh, use wait for uh, event or uh, uh, event for an element to be visible. Uh, if the application is browser-based application, um, it's not a good idea to use a thread sleep. The, la the thread sleep just adds up the testing time, and in some cases, uh, it may not solve the issue. Uh, use abstractions where possible uh, for usability, for clarity, and ease of maintenance. And uh, for any automated test, how do you know that your test is successful? Uh, the way you do that is through assertions or validations, and that helps you validate that your automated test succeeded. Uh, and uh, you can use conditions in your automated test, of course, um, it, which can be data-driven, but it's always a good idea to uh, use it to minimum, so you know, reduce the use of conditions. Um, you set up steps to prepare for your test. So if you need to set up uh, maybe some test data in the database or uh, uh, some other um, initialization uh, that can be done through setup steps and then you execute the test. And after you finish running the test, you have tear down steps um, to clean up the data, maybe repopulate your test data so that the next test run is successful. Um, use data-driven tests instead of hard coding data. And this is always a good idea. In today's uh, uh, um, applications, they behave differently depending on the data that you provide. Uh, positive scenarios, negative scenarios. So the way you can do that is by using data that is fed uh, externally into your test automation. It's, it's always a good idea to use uh, data-driven testing instead of hard coding your test data. Um, using design patterns while designing your test is, is important and uh, using a stable test environment is also, also very important. When your test fails, you want to make sure that it's failing either because maybe uh, the application is not performing correctly or uh, maybe your test automation is not uh, performing correctly. Uh, you don't want to add another variable where your test environment is flaky. And uh, for this purpose, it is important to have an um, independent test environment, whether it is uh, uh, physical, virtual, uh, for, to run your test. Uh, this makes it easier to debug your test if they are failing. For web UI testing, uh, creating tests that are self-healing, meaning resistant to small changes in the UI, uh, is also something that you can do today. There are a number of testing tools, including testing, 
that provide this capability in some form or other. And this uh, reduces the amount of maintenance that uh, uh, you have to do for your automated test. Following a naming convention to name your test that is aligned with the naming convention that you follow for your source code and development, it makes it easier to identify and locate your test and also associate with uh, the appropriate um, source counterpart. Most frameworks take snapshot, in some cases, uh, um, videos of your test runs, and uh, this helps with debugging. Uh, they also provide reporting capabilities that provides uh, you the status of your test, the health of your test, and um, also the state of your test automation efforts. Um, UI, or user interface testing, is at the top of uh, the testing pyramid. Just testing the user interface isn't enough. A unit test, integration test, and other tests must be done in conjunction with UI tests to improve quality of your software and be successful with your uh, test automation efforts. Um, as you continue uh, with your test automation efforts, you will learn you, you, and have your own best practices for your organization, for your applications. And it is important to capture that knowledge, share that knowledge, and use it uh, across uh, your organization. Um, Joe Colantanio is a renowned uh, domain expert in, in the testing space. I found this article uh, on his website where he summarized what are some of the reasons why automation tests and become flaky, and I found it very informative. Uh, this is a good piece of advice from an expert in the field, and this aligns quite well with some of the points that I covered earlier in my, in my presentation. Now, um, let's look into some of the test automation frameworks and tools. And there are plenty of them, and I'll try to hover over the categories with uh, some examples for each. When Mercury pioneered uh, performance testing in mid or late 1990s, uh, it was a load generating tool, just a tool. And over the years, it added support for more protocols, uh, more execution platforms, uh, more applications, and uh, adding enterprise level features around reporting, logging, exception handling, notifications, etc. Um, later, a load runner uh, was tightly integrated with HP's uh, Unified Functional Test, or QTP. Um, application Lifecycle Management, or ALM, and the architecture were enhanced to support modern-day applications on the internet with uh, millions of virtual users connecting from all over the world uh, to do performance testing. Uh, it provided authoring and execution environment, including libraries for integration with other applications, and a UI uh, to create the automated test easily. And that is what I mean by test automation framework. Uh, it is the scaffolding that is laid to provide an execution environment for your automation test scripts. The framework provides the user with uh, various benefits that help them to develop, execute, and report the automation test uh, scripts and test runs. It is more like a system that is created specifically to automate your tests. So test automation framework um, is a combination of uh, set protocols, rules, standards, and guidelines that can be used as a whole to leverage the benefits of the scaffolding provided by the framework when implementing test automation. The advantages of test automation frameworks can be in different forms, like um, uh, ease of scripting or, or recording when you create a test, um, scalability, um, modularity, um, uh, clarity, uh, process definition, um, reusability, and of course, um, uh, cost and maintenance as well. Um, that's, uh, to be able to grab these benefits, um, developers and testers are advised to use one or more test automation framework that fits your needs. But uh, when you have many developers uh, working on different modules of the same application, you may consider a single test automation framework to avoid situations where each developer implements or tester implements his or her uh, own approach towards um, automation. So here I've also listed uh, some open source options and few vendor source test automation frameworks that um, uh, you can look at uh, if you um, are interested. So how do I pick a test automation tool or a test automation framework? There is no correct test tool for automating uh, testing. Ultimately, it all depends on your team's unique needs and skill sets. I've always uh, recommended uh, that uh, you run a two-week uh, proof of concept, uh, 
POC uh, for each tool that you're considering um, and uh, review your team's feedback because they are the ones who will be using the solution and uh, adopting the solution. Uh, find out if the tool has an active user base um, outside your organization and select tools that other companies are using. So determine how easy uh, it is uh, to hire folks as well because if you need to hire new folks, uh, you need the skills um, to use the tools that you are planning to adopt. Um, review product roadmap and make sure that uh, the tools that you select will handle uh, future features and technologies that uh, you have in mind, you have in your roadmap. And finally, evaluate cost, not only the initial cost of deployment, but also uh, maintenance um, and subscription cost uh, as appropriate. On the right, I have um, uh, listed some categories of tools that you may consider uh, to implement test out, um, automation in your organization, including uh, test management tools, uh, cross-browser testing, automated testing, web UI, mobile UI, load testing, and a number of additional tools that you would need to support your testing needs. Uh, in addition, you have uh, uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery tools that you also need to look into. Uh, if you are planning to implement uh, continuous testing. So in this and the next slide, I provided some examples of tools that falls into the categories that I mentioned in the previous slide. Um, this slide covers um, test management, automated testing, cross-browser testing, load testing, and, uh, and then of course this particular slide uh, covers uh, some of the other categories. And uh, I apologize if your favorite tool isn't on, uh, on these slides. Uh, there are so many, and I haven't used them all. Uh, this list is based on my use of some of the tools firsthand, uh, reviews and recommendations from customers and colleagues, and also um, recommendations from thought leaders in the industry in this area. I haven't covered a few categories of tools, like uh, service virtualization, test data management, uh, which I did uh, mention earlier uh, in the presentation, but um, uh, service virtualization, of course, uh, CA has a solution, uh, Terrasoft, Tricentis, uh, they have solutions for service virtualization. And of course, there are some open source uh, like Mock, uh, Mocker, Fake, and, and, and for test data management, um, CA and IBM, Tri uh, Tricentis, as well as uh, Informatica have solutions around those areas. A simple Google search will also provide you a list of tools in each of these categories. Um, what are some of the new trends in test automation? Uh, applications today have become uh, much more complex. Um, they are no longer monolithic. They interact with uh, many other applications um, using APIs. The user interactions with these applications are much more complex and can be on a variety of devices. Um, your computer, desktop, mobile, uh, web, uh, or, or in other devices. As a result, the complexity of testing these applications have grown in a nonlinear fashion. Um, AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning uh, is expected to play a key role in solving complexity of testing modern day applications. Um, experts, they, they feel that uh, there are different ways AI will influence software testing. We are already seeing um, AI being introduced in the testing tools uh, that we use today. Testing, for example, allows test cases to execute successfully even when there have been minor changes in the application or in the application UI. Uh, testing uses reinforced uh, machine learning techniques uh, to locate and identify elements in the application of test, web UI, even when certain attributes of uh, that particular element have changed. So tests no longer have to be deterministic. Um, AI uh, will be able to test non-deterministic scenarios as well. And Apply Tools, for example, enhances tests with AI-powered visual verifications. Uh, there will be a range of possible outcomes. A test engineer uh, would just have to run a test many times and make sure that uh, statistically the conclusion uh, based on test results is correct. Um, test automation, they may know uh, how to interact with your system. 
but it cannot distinguish between the correct and incorrect behaviors of the application on the test. And that is why uh, AI will enable testing tools to understand the system better. Um, sample scenarios where AI is used today um, include um, auto-healing, test scripts, uh, like I mentioned earlier, for small application changes or application UI changes for effective regression testing and reduce your test maintenance. Um, Auto-validating test inputs um, based on machine learning without any uh, additional uh, manual user input validations. And also uh, auto-generating your test cases based on um, actual usage of your application by, uh, by the end users. And how does this help? I mean, this help, of course, reducing your maintenance, reducing the additional effort that you have to put uh, in order to um, uh, complete your automation scripts uh, through validations, and also uh, automating the whole process of creating your test scripts in the first place, and just focusing on the areas uh, which are, or scenarios which are being used by your customers. Um, examples of test automation tools that use AI today, uh, I provided some of them on the right, testing Apple tools, Testcraft, and others. They do use, um, and others, of course, enable, and they do use AI in some form or another to improve uh, the amount of maintenance that you have to do on your tests. Um, autonomous software testing uh, is uh, definitely a buzzword today. Um, autonomous testing is not. Autonomous testing isn't uh, just for automobiles anymore. We have been seeing Tesla and others uh, trying to do a lot of it. Uh, AI and ML are expected to play a key role in delivering uh, autonomous software testing, uh, moving from driver to driverless, uh, monitor to non-monitored, and uh, manual creation, execution, and maintenance of test cases to doing it all automatically or create your automated test uh, through, um, based on actual usage of the application by, by monitoring that, um, executing it whenever uh, there is a change in the application, a new build or a, or a change request, and then maintaining your test cases or in, in a self-healing way whenever there are small changes in the UI, um, automatically take care of it. So all of that would be what I would term as um, autonomous uh, software testing. So AI-based learning from failures is also uh, uh, helping and will help like on how you run your new test uh, or how you create your new test and uh, even when uh, certain uh, situations have changed. So currently, autonomous solutions in software testing uh, is still in infancy. Uh, functional testing tools have adopted various forms of autonomous capabilities like we have seen in the previous slide, uh, from discovering an application structure to predictive self-healing to intelligent uh, bug hunting. However, end-to-end um, -end autonomous testing solutions have yet to be um, developed in, in a kind of production scale or adopted by um, large enterprises. Uh, so thank you all for attending this session uh, on test automation strategy and design uh, for agile teams. Um, I will review your questions and try to answer as many as I can. Um, and uh, if you have any additional questions, you can definitely reach me on LinkedIn or um, my testing email, which is my first name at testing.io. Um, let me look into um, or uh, any unanswered questions, uh, I will uh, try to uh, respond to that through emails after the sessions. Let me now look into um, some of the questions that you have. I see a question there. Uh, how do you determine test tool cost? Um, um, test tool cost uh, will depend on the type of tool that you are trying to use. Say, for example, uh, if you if you um, uh, use testing, uh, it is a SaaS-based solution. So it's a subscription-based um, solution. So you would have to pay a subscription fee for a certain amount of time uh, to use the solution. And then uh, different subscriptions have different um, kind of measures. Um, for testing, it's based on number of test runs. Um, other tools may have uh, other measures. But then package software would be, you buy the software, there's upfront cost, and then there is a maintenance cost per year to get newer versions and so on. I hope that answers your question. Um, how to automate user experience testing? Yes, and this is definitely a uh, uh, very, very interesting question. I was actually talking to a customer last week 
uh, who are building solutions uh, to uh, do user experience testing. And uh, typically, um, um, user experience and how long your customer or the user is on the website goes hand in hand. Is it, is it executing the scenario? Does it, the customer path, the path that the customer is taking, is that following a scenario? And if it does, uh, is the customer actually going to the end of the scenario? And that's, that's something that uh, can definitely measure uh, whether uh, the customer is actually getting what is at, looking for, uh, whether it's a document, whether it's buying something, maybe the customer has completed a sale, or maybe the customer did some search and couldn't find the stuff and now went to some other website. Um, those are some of the things. And of course, reviews. Um, um, reviews on other websites for mobile applications, so there are reviews. Those um, kind of uh, ways to measure user experience testing. How to automate a GUI layout testing, which is very subjective depending on different end users. Um, this is true. Um, now, layout would depend on the application as well. Uh, for mobile, it's different. Um, and, and for web, of course, there is different. There is always some type of standard uh, people, and there are other standards for GUI layout as well. Um, and you have to look into, uh, into that uh, and also it will depend on what exactly uh, uh, your business is and so on. Um, another question here is, uh, are there any open source tools for AI or ML automation that is well known? Um, there, there possibly are, uh, but I don't, uh, I can't remember off my, top of my mind. Uh, I would do the same thing that you would, probably do a Google search and, uh, and find that information. Um, any open source tool on AMI, validate web UI? Uh, kind of related to the previous question. I don't know. But you are, uh, you are more than welcome to try out testing. And I'm sure uh, some of our competitors also provide uh, trials that you can use to try out. I mean, there's nothing wrong with trying it out. To see how AI ML works. We make a change. So we test in. You just have to open up a trial, and you have access to all of it, all of the AI ML functionality. You create a test to recording, and then um, you go ahead and try to run it. It all runs fine. Uh, after that, um, you make a change to the UI and try to run it again and see if it runs okay. And uh, um, um, other tools as well as testing have uh, the chat capability. If you run into issues, if you would like some help, they can definitely help. Uh, there is a general question. Uh, we always find it difficult to find the right test data, and uh, many times we had to cancel the testing. Uh, this is because of many factors, such as no access to prop data, not able to mock data, not able to scrub data. How do you handle such situations, or is automation uh, can play any role in such cases? Yes, I think this is a great question. Um, this is a great question also for another reason, because test data is important. Just uh, a couple of days ago, or yesterday, I think, we have seen how Catcal 1 got hacked, and a few years ago, we have seen how Target got hacked. And in Target's case, it was their test environment that was exposed. Uh, test environments should not be using PII, or personally identifiable data. Um, they should be using um, mass data or data that does not have any PII information. Uh, regulations um, like GDPR, uh, General Data Protection Regulation uh, in Europe, or new regulations that are coming up in the state of California or in the US, uh, prevent you from using PII data. So uh, when you create your test data from prod, um, even though, I mean, uh, you don't have any other access, and, and, and the data is not mockable, uh, then that's a big challenge. So how do you solve the problem? Now you solve the problem using synthetic test data generation. And what is synthetic test data generation? It is an approach that many customers are using to create test data synthetically. You model your test data. So for example, you have a customer table. You create the customer uh, table model inside your test generation tool. You provide some um, uh, sample data, 
uh, and uh, based on the sample data and this data set, it can be region specific, it can be gender specific, it can be a particular customer segment specific that is taken to randomly draw data from those list, sample lists and create your synthetic test data. And that's how many customers uh, are producing test data and um, generating and testing uh, their um, solutions. Um, there are multiple different solutions uh, that does this. Uh, one is, of course, um, a CA test data management solution, IBM, Optim, uh, Informatica, and then there are also open source solutions uh, in GitHub, uh, like Faker, that does that. Another question, want to know more about handling change requirements in agile world? Um, yes, this is important. And uh, how, do you, how do you manage that? Uh, one of the agile principles says that um, you, you expect, you should expect changing requirements. As long as uh, the changes are not too big, uh, you try to incorporate that in the sprint. If the changes are big, then you don't want to derail your sprint. You want to continue or finish your sprint and uh, maybe address that changing requirements in the next sprint. Um, another question, how to automate GUI layout testing, which is very subjective depending on different end users. Um, I think I have covered that. Um, excellent. Um, I think there are no other questions. So I would like to thank you for your time. Thank you for taking the time to attend my sessions. Uh, if you'd like to contact me, you have my email address. I've mentioned that earlier. You can also reach me on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.